New developments tonight in an Action News 5 investigation centered on a former Memphis police officer who violated policy with his taser. So often, his nickname was Taser Face. More than three years after quitting the force and taking a job with South Haven PD, Tennessee investigators are finally prepared to review the allegations against him. The question is, what took so long? The answers may surprise you. Here's Action News 5's investigator Jessica Jaglois in partnership with the U of M's Institute for Public Service Reporting. On a crisp spring night in 2019, I'm not feeling well, man. members of the Memphis Police Department's crisis intervention team responded to a home in Southeast Memphis. Mentally or like physically? Just like physically. That's 20 year old Joshua Cortez whose mother called officers because her son had been drinking and told her he felt like dying. Can I sit down? Yeah, you can sit down, You're hearing Officer Colin Berryhill and watching the scene as recorded through his body camera. Cortez had no criminal history, and Berryhill was specially trained to respond to those struggling with mental crises. The 10-year police veteran persuaded Cortez to speak with him outside. Y'all ain't gonna detain me though, are you? I, I You're free. You're free. I'm, I'm sorry right now, buddy. You're totally free. All right. Once outside, Cortez began crying, saying he's had family issues. I mean, are you feeling suicidal or anything like that? No, I just, I'm just sad, that's all. You're just sad? I don't want to go back, please, brother. Cortez is saying he doesn't want to go back to a treatment center. I mean, I... I don't have any reason to take you anywhere right now. Barry Hill explained he's concerned Cortez will hurt himself. And after they walk inside, the officer spoke to Cortez's mother, saying they will have to take the young man into custody. Is he aggressive? It's then that Officer Barry Hill's tone noticeably changes as he starts giving Cortez commands. Stand up, put your hands behind your back. Stand up, put your hands behind your back. Wait, play with me. Stand up, put your hands behind your back. No, you y'all said that. Stand up, put your hands behind your back. Hold on, y'all said that. Stand up. No, I said you weren't at that time. You are now. Stand up. Whoa, come on, man. Come on, man. Come on. Come on, no, bro. Just, just cooperate. Come on, please. Just, hey, just cooperate. Please, No, no, no. Uh huh. Please. No, I got more short. Come cooperate, man. You can see Cortez put his hands behind his back while he continues to plead with officers. Please, please. A minimum of four officers were in full control of Cortez's arms and hands, yet... <laughs> Barry Hill used his taser to shock Cortez. Oh, my God, that taser! Hey, relax, oh, that relax. Taser. Internal records provided by the Memphis Police Department show Officer Barry Hill violated the department's weapons and excessive force policies that night. Barry Hill explained to the deputy police chief during the internal investigation, I felt a simple pain compliance for a second could get him to comply long enough to where we could get him into cuffs. But using a taser for pain compliance is not only against MPD policy, but also policies at many other police departments, according to Clark Neely with the Cato Institute in Washington, D.C. The problem is that um, you, you can't use a taser as a form of punishment. Neely works with the libertarian think tank to advocate against police officers who violate the constitutional rights of citizens. We all have a constitutional right to be free from unreasonable force. You're not supposed to use a weapon unless the situation really calls for it, because otherwise that's an unreasonable use of force. An Action News 5 investigation reveals Memphis police internal investigators found Barry Hill in fact violated the department's excessive force and weapons policies three times in less than a year. According to those internal documents, the first time was in 2018 when Barry Hill tased a juvenile in the back even though he did not pose an immediate threat. I'll wait till he uh, turn around. He was still getting them. I took him to the ground. The second time was when he tased Cortez. Oh. Put your hands behind your back. And the third was on Owen Buzzard, a nonviolent man who was handcuffed when Barry Hill tased him. The night of that incident with Buzzard, an MPD supervisor on scene told Officer Barry Hill he'd earned a new nickname. It's Taser Face. <laughs> After MPD launched their internal investigation into Barry Hill's use of excessive force, they completed it in October 2019. 
but waited an entire year to schedule his disciplinary hearing. Barry Hill abruptly resigned the night before that hearing and took a job with the South Haven, Mississippi Police Department the following month in November 2020. Nearly two years later, Memphis Police Chief C.J. Davis asked the state to take Barry Hill's law enforcement certification, which would have prevented him from policing in Tennessee. But the state didn't act on that request for nearly another year and didn't schedule his hearing until we started asking questions. Post Commission uh, to order. The Peace Officer Standards and Training Commission, or POST, is responsible for certifying and decertifying police officers in Tennessee. But for it can decertify officers, POST must notify them and then schedule a hearing. In an email, a spokesperson for the agency that oversees POST wrote, Memphis Police Chief C.J. Davis signed a decertification request in December 2021, but didn't send it until July 2022. POST sent Barry Hill a notification letter the following year in June but couldn't reach him because he moved without telling Post, which is required. After we started asking questions in late September, Post notified Barry Hill of his pending decertification via email on October 3rd. He's now on the agenda for December 14th. The spokesman also wrote, there are nearly 40 other officers waiting for decertification letters, but Post can't find them. That's the $64,000 question. Why did they take so long? There's no question that MPD and the state of Tennessee through the Post Commission and these national organizations have structures in place to catch this sort of thing. The problem is it doesn't seem that they're working efficiently. Mark Perisquio with the Institute for Public Service Reporting is working in partnership with the Action News 5 investigators to continue digging into this issue. We're going to do our best to hold the police accountable. The Memphis Police Department said it would answer a list of questions we sent them, but they did not, and then they stopped responding to us. Now, we are currently looking into that list of police officers waiting to be decertified. More than a third of them are coming from MPD. For the Action News 5 investigators and in partnership with the Institute for Public Service Reporting, I'm Jessica Jaglois. Now, we have tried repeatedly to talk to Officer Colin Berry Hill, but he has not answered our request. So you may be asking, why does this story matter to you? Well, because there are dozens of officers in Tennessee whose own police departments say they should not have badges, but they still do, and nothing is stopping them. We have much more reporting on this issue in partnership with the Institute for Public Service Reporting online at actionnews5.com.